Hi, I'm Lynn H., also known as Lynn Hirschberger from ColorJoy.com, and I'm going to show you today how to do a backward loop cast on, uh, which is a nice flat cast on, and it does not need a knot to start the square toe or the Bosnian toe that I specified in my crystal socklet from Knitty. So, first of all, um, I'm using larger needles and yarn today so that you can see it a little better in the video. But normally you'd be using smaller needles and a smaller uh, sock yarn. First you're going to hang this yarn towards the ground and you're going to take your first double pointed needle and just hold them together. And that is your knot. This is the knot that you don't need to tie one. Um, now we're going to make what's called a backward loop or a half hitch or an e-wrap and I usually do it with my index finger although some people use their thumb. I tend to grab it like I'm going to punch the sky here and then point away from me and then point to the ground and to myself and to the sky. When I've done that now I'm going to go straight up my finger to catch that and there's a little X or crossed uh, yarn at the bottom and I'm going to let it off my finger and just snug it here, not too tight, but just snug it to the, to the needle. And I'm going to do that again, take my yarn over, and a lot of people have a tendency to want to flick away from themselves, but you want to go over and toward you with your finger and then go up and off and then snug it. Now generally when you're casting on, you need to have the stitches just the same amount of, of, of distance apart as your needle is wide. It should not be any tighter than that. So in this case, we're at the top of a, he, uh, of a foot and it won't really matter. But for most cast-ons, you really need the, the width of that stretch. So we're going to do this again, point down and up and around. Now, I believe in the UK, they sometimes call this the thumb cast-on because they take their thumb over the top and they go like this and they take it up. So if that's how someone taught you, that also works. It's the same thing. You can do it all numbers of ways, but what you want to do is kind of put, make sure they're kind of uh, even. And that's your cast on. For the crystal sock, you need 10 stitches. So we're going to, I'm going to go back to my Let's see, two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. And there we go, that's the cast on. Now for the Bosnian toe, there are a number of ways to do a Bosnian toe. Um, I've always called it the start with a square toe. I didn't know it was Bosnian until recently. Donna Dracunas has a sock that I investigated that she brought from, I believe, um, well, somewhere Eastern Europe and it had a Bosnian toe where they actually then um, they did a square that was stockinette on the front but they took the strand of the yarn across the back almost like an I cord and started knitting from here and went across and then pulled it around so there's actually strands across the back where they circle to the front and they always knit across they never turn it around in my heel or in my toe what we're going to do instead is here's our cast on the first row you're going to have to knit because that first and last stitch needs a knit not not a slip and so we're going to wrap that and this is uh, I often do the first stitch or two holding my yarn in my right hand which is called English or British or American knitting and I have a funny little uh, way of doing a left-handed hold which is called continental I hold my yarn very very low but it's still this is a very pointy needle and so this type of cast on does tighten up a little bit if you find that your stitch is really too tight what you want to do put your finger on the side of that needle don't pull your hands apart keep them really close and go straight up and that's going to give you a little bit more airspace in this hole so that when you go up you can get in there and that's what I hadn't done there just a minute ago you need to hold that stitch open it's not cheating to use your fingernail if you need to do that 
but I've got size 2 needles and DK weight yarn. You don't usually use this small of a needle with this large of a, of a yarn. Now this is my last stitch and that's where it crossed, but if I let go I'm going to lose a stitch. So again I'm going to use my hand as the knot by holding that in place to get that last stitch made. That was the first row, that's knitting. You're going to now turn around and you're going to slip the first stitch both on the knit side and the purl side while you're knitting this and so or while you're working this. So we're going to slip and we're going to slip as if to purl so that it doesn't twist. This keeps the right leg of the stitch forward. If you did a slip with your knit if you insert it as a knit, then it brings the left leg forward, and we do use that when we're doing decreases, but normally you wouldn't do that if you're just moving a stitch over. So I'm using a slip as if to purl, and then we can purl all these little guys all the way across. And again, I have a very strange purl method. I don't know anyone else who purls like me. Well, a friend does because I taught her she's left-handed and she wanted to do it my way. Whoops! Again we're dealing with the very pointy needles. Make sure that you always remember there's air spaces between the yarn and the needle and you need to go after those air spaces. You don't just stab, you, you aim at the air so that you don't split your yarn. Even with very very pointy needles like this I don't have to split that yarn if I'm paying attention. So now I'm on the first knit row that's not in a uh, the cast on. I'm going to slip it again as if to purl because I'm avoiding I'm avoiding the twist. Doesn't matter if I'm going to knit a row or purl a row. I'm still going to slip it as if to purl and then I'm going to knit this row. I'm going to continue to do the first stitch slipped and the uh, one row of knitting and one row of purling and keep on going until I followed my instructions and on the crystal sock I believe I've specified 12 rows. There we go. Well I'm having trouble with splits even though I gave you great advice. I can see it right there. There we go. And I'm going to keep my work, keep going around until I finish that piece of fabric, which is a square. By the way, also Lucy Neatby, who is an amazing teacher, and I highly recommend anything she teaches, she does a Bosnian toe, which she does with a garter stitch square, a garter fabric, and she pairs it with a short row heel, which is also garter. And uh, she teaches quite a number of excellent sock knitting classes and I really recommend anything she teaches. If she is uh, teaching boiling water you should sign up. <laughs> so this is the beginning of my Bosnian toe or my start with a square toe and uh, here I've got it on big needles and big yarn for, for a sock but I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing. Uh, I'm going to do a different video that shows you how to then take that square and make it go in the round for you. Thank you so much for listening and I'm really happy to have you with me today. I'm Lynn H. from colorjoy.com. Thanks for coming.